right, let's see if we can not dig a little deeper into um, why the swaps market is uh, such a popular thing. And it's got to do more than just change my cash flow from fixed to floating. Uh, there must be some greater motivation for it. Otherwise, uh, look at the argument I've written at the top of the screen in, in uh, blue here. If I'm AAA, why do I need a swap? Why do I need anybody? I can get the lowest interest rates. I can get whatever I want. I can already get the lowest rates. If I want floating, I can get floating. If I want fixed, I can get fixed. Not only that, since I'm AAA, it's easy for me to place my debt. It's easy for me to underwrite my debt. It's easy to find an underwriter. Why do I need anybody to help me with anything at this point? The argument put forward, uh, which, and let me say uh, two things here. I agree with the argument. I disagree with the name of the argument. We're looking at it from the wrong perspective, I think. The argument is called the comparative advantage argument. I prefer to call it the comparative disadvantage argument, and I'll show you why uh, in a second, but follow along. It's a good argument. It's, I think, a valid argument. It's probably true uh, for the most part, except it's not so much advantage but disadvantage. So let's take uh, company A and company B. And company A is, uh, we'll say, is triple A. Here's our example down here. Company A is a triple A. Uh, company and company B is triple B and uh, we'll assume that that's their credit rating triple A can borrow in the fixed rate market at 4% triple B costs 5.2 so rather I don't like saying that A is advantaged in the fixed rate market I like to say that B is disadvantaged in this market by 1.2% so if the triple A rate is 4% B is disadvantaged, or triple B is disadvantaged by 1.2% in the fixed rate market. That is their disadvantage is 1.2. If we head over to the floating rate market, triple A can borrow at six month LIBOR minus 10 basis points. Triple B borrows at six months LIBOR plus 60 basis points. So in the floating rate market, triple B is disadvantaged by 70 basis points. They're not, they don't have an advantage. The way we read it in the, in the text suggests that triple B has an advantage in the floating rate market while triple A has an advantage in the fixed rate market. You'll get further if you think about it in terms of disadvantage. In the fixed rate market, triple B is 1.2% disadvantaged. In the floating rate market, triple B is only 0.7% disadvantaged. Now, look at the difference between the disadvantage. There's 50 basis points of difference between the disadvantage. So there is an opportunity to lower everybody's borrowing costs in aggregate by 50 basis points. By 50 basis points, there is an opportunity here, and we're going to see where, where, where that lies, but we have an opportunity because there's a difference, a differential in the amount of disadvantage between a fixed rate market and a floating rate market. Now, you might ask, why would there be this differential between fixed and floating? And here's why. If these are five-year terms, I must lend money to triple B for five years, I don't get to renegotiate the credit spread. The credit spread is the credit spread on day one. Well, triple B has a prob probability of degrading in their credit. A possibility of increasing as well, but what if they degrade? Well, now my credit spread is, is less than it should be. I am now being underpaid to take on risk. So, to compensate for that, under, for, for, for that, I'm going to need a higher fixed rate initially than triple B normally would. I will, I'm going to want a higher rate initially to compensate me for that. But over here, six month LIBOR plus 0.6, at every six month anniversary date, I get to reevaluate this credit spread. So it might not be, uh, the next one uh, payment might be a six month LIBOR plus 70 basis points. The next one might be six month LIBOR plus 80 basis points. Because I can adjust every six months, I'm willing to say, well, my risk for six months really is, you're, you're really disadvantaged by 70, uh, 70 basis point spread, but if I gotta lock it in, I'm gonna lock it in higher. 
So that's, that's why this differential exists. And because of that, there is an opportunity for both AAA and BBB, with the help of a financial services company, to lower the aggregate interest expense that both companies experience. Well, let's expand our comparative advantage, or as I like to say, our comparative disadvantage argument. And I've replicated the rates for AAA and BBB in both the fixed and the floating rate market here. And we can see in the fixed rate market that BBB is disadvantaged by 1.2%. And we can see in the floating rate market that uh, B is disadvantaged by 70 basis points. Now, if we refer to this as A, and let's say this is B, if you take A minus B, we will get 50 basis points. So we can improve the aggregate interest expense of both companies combined by 50 basis points if one borrows in one rate, another borrows in the opposite rate, and they swap cash flows. We have the, the ability to improve the situation by 50 basis points. So let's see how we're going to do this, and we'll, we'll say that they're going to split the 50 basis points uh, between themselves. So we have a situation where B will borrow and will pay six-month LIBOR plus 60 basis points. And AAA will borrow and will pay the 4% fixed rate. But AAA would like to pay a floating rate, and BBB would like to pay a fixed rate. And since we're going to split 50 basis points, let's see how well we can do. Well, AAA can get 6-month LIBOR minus 0.1. So to make it interesting for them, they need to end up in a position where they're getting six-month LIBOR minus 0.35. That gets 25 basis points better. And B can borrow at 5.2, but they'd like to get to a situation where their borrowing costs are 4.95%. So they want to borrow fixed at 4.95. How much do they need to pay AAA? What fixed rate do they need to pay AAA? Well, Let's start off with the easy part. A will send over to B LIBOR. We don't adjust LIBOR, we adjust the fixed rate. So B will get LIBOR. So 4.95 has to equal LIBOR plus 0.6% minus LIBOR plus some fixed uh, interest rate. So LIBORs cancel out and we have the 0.6 plus some fixed interest rate, we can see that the fixed interest rate that would have to be paid will be 4.35%. 4 4.35 plus 0.6 will put to, to 4.95. So B will pay a 4.35% fixed. So B side is done, right? B will pay 4.35 and in exchange receive LIBOR but they will pay externally LIBOR plus 0.6. So the LIBORs cancel out. We'll have 60 basis points on their external debt plus 4.35 on the swap for a total of 4.95. Let's take a walk over and have a look at what A is doing. A was originally paying 4% uh, and they want to pay something less. So A is paying out LIBOR. A will pay B LIBOR. Plus, they have 4% that they're paying externally minus the 4.35% that they're going to get from the swap. So A ends up in a situation of LIBOR minus 35 basis points. So LIBOR minus 35 basis points. They could have borrowed at LIBOR minus 10 basis points. Now their borrowing cost is LIBOR minus 35 basis points. So has A done better with the swap than it could have without the swap? In this case, we must say yes. Yes, they have done better. B is now borrowing at 4.95 fixed. Is B doing better than they could have done without the swap? Yes. There we go. So in this situation, we are not preserving the aggregate interest paid. If we were preserving the aggregate interest paid, a would have borrowed at six-month LIBOR minus 0.1, and 
and B would have borrowed at 5.2, which would, would have made an aggregate borrowing expense of LIBOR plus 5.1. Here we have LIBOR minus 0.35, and here we have 0.495. So if we add the two together, we get LIBOR plus 4.6. LIBOR, let's say, and then we'll, we'll subtract that minus. Our new rate is LIBOR plus 4.6. What is the difference between that? 50 basis points. So the companies together have been able to squeeze 50 basis points of interest expense out of the system. Out of the system. All right, so A will achieve this. We'll be paying LIBOR minus 0.35. Now this, that doesn't change. For five years, that doesn't change. There is a net gain of 25 basis points that they've achieved. And this rate, this LIBOR minus 0.35, is now fixed for five years. And I hate to use the term fixed in there, but uh, this is I, I mean it in this sense. They don't have a fixed interest rate. Their interest expense of LIBOR minus 0.35 does not change for the full, for the full period. In other words, they've locked in LIBOR minus 0.35, whatever LIBOR happens to be. On this side, Company B has achieved a, an interest rate, a fixed rate of 4.9%. Only, this is important now, only if their credit spread is constant. Only if the credit spread is constant. Because here's what happens. They still have externally six month LIBOR plus 0.6. They still have that 60 basis point spread over LIBOR externally. Even though they're receiving LIBOR to the swap, they still must honor this externally. AAA is not making the payment for them, it's passing the payment to BBB so that BBB can make the payment. If at the next six month period, Triple B's credit quality has deteriorated and that spread increases by 20, 40, 50, 60 basis points. This fixed rate will reflect that spread. So Triple B only has a fixed rate of 4.95% if the spread is constant at 0.6. If their credit quality deteriorates, then that's gone. But for Triple A, it will always be LIBOR minus 0.35. So A walks away very, very happy. B walks away happy as well, but hey, listen, they got to manage their own business to manage their credit spread. You can't blame A or the swaps market for uh, for a blowing out of their credit spread. If that blows out, then 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 that's it, right? Well, let's introduce the financial institution to see what happens. And while I was drawing this out, I said we never adjust LIBOR. LIBOR will always get passed through at whatever LIBOR is. And there's the fixed rate. Whenever the financial institution steps in, it always adjusts the fixed rate because it offers a bid and an ask on the fixed rate. So let's put our financial institution up here. And if the swap rate is 4.35, B will pay 4.37. And the financial institution will pass on to A 4.33. You can think of 4.33 as the bid and 4.37 as the ask, with the average of the two being the swap rate. So in other words, in this particular situation, if A and B were not going to talk to each other and they both went to a financial institution, the A and B would find that given where LIBOR is, the financial institution had a bid and ask rate on their fixed rate of 433 and 437. That means that B would have to pay the financial institution 437 to get LIBOR, and A would have to pay the financial institution LIBOR to get 433. That's the bid and the ask. These are the rates at which the financial institution is willing to swap fixed for floating, floating being the LIBOR that exists at that time. That's important. Let's, uh, let's move on.